stand by. For a long time, I've been a fan of tabletop role-playing games. Now, for those who are not familiar with what a tabletop RPG is, think of a game like Dungeons & Dragons. You have characters, sometimes on a board, sometimes just displayed through text or through imagination, and a few dice rolls to determine how things go. These games are, for me, some of the most immersive and open-ended experiences you can have as a game player. They're things that aren't limited by the confines of somebody's code or the graphical limitations of some kind of game. Something truly unique to role-playing games is the fact that you have this incredibly expansive, infinite theater of the mind. Something that lets you just imagine what's going on and fill in those creative blanks with your own thoughts. This has a lot of benefits, and while it may not be the most dazzling bells and whistle kind of presentation, when it comes to creating unique and meaningful character interactions and original story beats, I don't think anything has come close to the abilities of a tabletop role-playing game. Now, my personal experience with tabletop RPGs has varied over the years. The very first time I ever played one, looking back, was playing a Dungeons & Dragons scenario, I believe in fourth grade. One of my classmates bought a D&D set and brought it to school, and it was the first time I'd ever tried to play Dungeons & Dragons in any capacity. And it was really cool. Uh, we played a predetermined scenario with preset conditions, and we did it, and it was fine. I liked the concept, but I never really got back into it at any point throughout the remainder of those years in my youth. And then when I went off to university, only then did I meet more players who were interested in doing that kind of thing. But not just in the confines of a tabletop scenario in real life, I also, during high school, did play some games online. Now, these games were a lot different because they didn't exactly fall under the D&D category uh, these were on the ScrewAttack.com forums. I was playing games like Mafia, uh, the classic you know, party sleuth detective kind of game where you have to determine who among you is the traitor and the betrayer and who's working against the town to ultimately win the game. These were amazing opportunities for their own kind of character role play scenarios. And as time went on, even though those stories were a bit different, I think they contributed a lot to my ability to sort of role play in character online. One of the things that I've always loved about tabletop games, especially D&D, is the opportunity to act. When you are somebody who's interested in performing and putting on a show, it is extremely engaging when you're playing a tabletop game and you have a character that you can sort of self-insert your performance into whenever they speak and have dialogue. So, you know, you could say, uh, my character goes to the local tavern and starts inquiring about the local news. If you have a good GM, they're probably going to be the type who plays out some of that scenario, not just by telling you what happens, but also by doing some actual character acting. And then you're like, so you're new in town. You have questions. Well, that will cost you five coins in drink before I speak. And then with your own character, you might chime in. Ah, yes, very good. Uh, let's do this. I will take five coins and drink. Now tell me, who is the local lord around here? Those kind of character interactions, for me, are a lot more fun. And they create a very special dynamic that only can exist in these roleplay scenarios. And again, the, the key is roleplay. Because without that element to it, you're really not going to get that full experience. Now, somebody I do want to give a shout out to, one of my first true GMs was a good friend of mine named Jorge, online known more commonly as Shotgun Friendly. Uh, I've lived with him before, but for a long time, uh, we used to do week-to-week -week sessions where we would play his original D&D Pathfinder story. And I really enjoyed playing that. Uh, another recurring name in this group dynamic is uh, Stuart, uh, and I, I lived with both of them at the time. But what we would do with our characters, um, you know, we would play in his world that he had set up for us. And it was really fun because of this crazy character dynamic, because neither Stuart or I had played a character that was human. Uh, mine was like a cat person, and his was like a Tengu, because these were available races in that particular game. And so I kind of, I played my guy up like some Antonio Banderas 
stereotypical Spaniard, and and he had a sort of a, a you know an, e- an Eastern flair to his because of the origin of Tengus, and it was just like this really cool character dynamic because they were buddies for a long time, and and working under this, and and uh, Jorge would. In, you know, he would role play out characters, but it was especially fun when he would play out uh, Boris, who was like our our team's commander, or he was he was the captain of our ship that we all worked on, our whole party. Um, and and he kind of just the way <laughs> I used to call him Boris Cosby because the way he would talk, he would be like, "Oh, you know, Caius, it's good to see you." You know, and it was just it was always really fun, and so kind of creating a, a unique world around that kind of an experience was something that I'll never forget because even though it was something that ultimately did not go forever, we spent a lot of weeks doing that and we would spend hours and hours playing the games. So let's kind of roll things back to to my whole entire perspective on what I think is great about tabletop style role play. I mean, I mentioned before, but there's just a different level of immersion and also agency uh, as a player. Now, player agency is... Essentially, the feeling that what you are doing has a direct impact on the world, but more importantly, fulfilling what you want to do and exerting your will. So sometimes you might play a video game where the opportunity to do something that you're very interested in doing is not presented to you. Like your character has like three options that they can pursue, but none of those options actually fit with what you want to do. And unfortunately, the game's limitations only allow so many potential options. So as a consequence, you might feel that your agency is being threatened because it's supposed to be a role-playing game, but you're not being given the full opportunity to actually do the thing that you want to do with your character. That sort of thing kind of breaks the immersion and ruins a game for you. But when you're playing with a good tabletop scenario, that isn't really a problem because the limitations are however far your game master is willing to to stretch the limits of the game. And in some cases, there are no limits, which has its own pros and its cons. But with that said, I have most deeply been involved in the last several years in role plays and tabletop experiences around a specific franchise of games. And they were all rooted around Danganronpa. Now, for those who are familiar with my own interests, I have a, a great big appreciation for this franchise. Though it has gone a little too crazy at times, I find games like Danganronpa, Zero Escape, and Ace Attorney to all be sort of from the same triumvirate of, of awesome that creates a murder mystery dynamic with a lot of intrigue and underlying in- interest. So, for that reason, I thought the opportunity to be involved in a tabletop game about Dung and Rumpa was one of the coolest ideas ever. And when somebody decided to host one online and I got to be a part of it, well, needless to say, I was deeply hooked. This was the kind of thing that did not have an off button. Unlike most tabletop games where you have a, me- a, a weekly session, these were done without a specific stopping point. These were just, hey, this is 24 hours online. You can log in, do whatever you want to do, hop off, freely interact with other people and pursue whatever grand plot you want to pursue on your own time. This for me was highly immersive and highly engaging and it was something that was not limited to a video game or limited to the mechanics or graphics but instead was entirely limited to my ability to perceive what was going on and respond to it in character. My first character that I made, I remember I wanted to kind of take things slow because it was my first time doing this kind of game. And so I ended up jumping in and making a character that I felt like was a simple kind of reflection, self-insert of myself, just to play it safe. And I went through his story, and it was enjoyable. And after that, I wanted to try something even more complicated. So I made a character whose limitation was being unable to speak and only being able to communicate through gesture. And that was a whole nother level of immersion and challenge as a writer. But what I really have found to be the most significant in these kinds of role play experiences are those moment to moment scenarios in which you are just so deeply engaged with your character's fate and you are so deeply rooted in that fate because of your own choices on how you play your character. 
And I think there's a really important balance between behaving in character and out of character that can very easily be broken. But if you can manage to stay within character with all of your actions, you're going to have a much more meaningful and honest experience with who that character really is. Now, I've done a number of Danganronpa-related role plays, and I finally decided at one point I wanted to do my own. I wanted to host one. And for me, I considered it a pretty difficult undertaking to to not just host a game with 16 plus players because unfortunately that's how many can be involved in Dong and Rumpa but also to make sure that I did not deviate from the canon and so I ended up doing this really I think safe approach to a section of the story that never really got a official attention I would say the launch of Hope's Peak Online which was the name of this particular Dong and Rumpa campaign was very successful. While there were a number of grievances I ran into along the way, namely players with their own inactivity compared to other players, or some just completely saying, oh, hey, uh, I know I signed up, but I'm dropping out. Aside from those kind of problems, I think it was really a very special kind of experience, and I can put an official duration on that. Hope's Peak Online lasted eight months, and that was eight months of time that was actively going by with people engaged and doing their own thing. That's a long time, but that's pretty typical for a tabletop role-playing game. Now, Hope's Peak Online did receive a sequel, Hope's Peak Online 2. And this game was something where I wanted to kind of break the formula a lot because I don't always like to do the same thing. And I remember thinking at the time, wow... You know, this is exactly what they did with The Legend of Zelda. This is what they did with Castlevania. They made a sequel, and they totally deviated from the established formula from the first entry because they wanted to try something new. And I realized, like, this is the appeal of that. This is this is why developers go in that direction when they make games and why they don't stick to what they know, like with something such as Mega Man. Mega Man 2 is a direct sequel in terms of content to Mega Man 1. It's the same kind of game, the same kind of gameplay, and just some different robot masters and abilities on new maps. Castlevania and Zelda 2 are a new approach to gameplay in a number of ways, particularly Zelda 2 with its side-scrolling approach to action, and Castlevania 2 with its open-world map and currency system and things like that. So there were a lot of reasons that I could make these kind of personal comparisons. Because while Danganronpa is typically, for those who are unaware, about murder mysteries and solving who committed the crime while also trying to get your characters out of the situation they're stuck in, my sequel was never really about the murder mystery, and it was instead about war. And for some players, this was a very welcome surprise, and for others, this was very alienating. It wasn't what they exactly signed up for, and it didn't work out toward their favor in that regard. But despite that, you know, I've finally taken the time to look back on when this whole thing started, and I've realized now it's been like over a year and a half that I've been engaged with Host Peak Online 2. And even though it officially reached its main scenario conclusion, right now, as I give this talk, I'm still deeply engaged in an epilogue with a number of the players. Now... I've gone into this very long tangent about Hope's Peak Online and Danganronpa roleplays in particular because from an emotional standpoint, I think I have experienced the most dramatic turn of minute-to-minute beats that I've ever experienced in any sort of game like it. For me, there have been a number of times where I, as a writer and character actor, was fulfilling the role of a character and went through an entire emotional journey with that character. And more than once, I can say, while at my keyboard typing away and playing music that I got to choose, because you don't have limitations on what music you can listen to when it's, you know, a free to homebrew game, I was there writing these tragic moments for my characters, and I would sometimes start crying. And... That's something that's kind of one of those very vulnerable places when you are immersing yourself into a character. I know this is something that happens on stage a lot in film. It is expected of actors to be able to go to that deep place, that that very personal place where 
they touch something within themselves that makes them really feel it. You know, it's method acting in a way. But when you're writing a character, I mean, I once had a character go through a panic attack and I started to feel the effects of that in real life while I was typing. And it was, you know, it's, it's kind of funny because again, it's total detachment, right? I'm on the other side of a computer screen. They're not real. They're just text on a screen. But for me, I was immersing myself so deeply in what I was writing that I was feeling it. And this is one of the most incredible experiences I have when it comes to tabletop roleplay. And it is very hard to create that same perfect experience for the player when you're making a traditional video game. Board games, things like that, you know, it, it sometimes takes theater of the mind to reach those very specific and profound emotional places. So... With all of this said, I want to encourage players of all types of games to spend some time looking at the potential and the opportunities that lie behind doing tabletop gaming. It's really a very unique kind of experience. There's nothing quite like it, whether it's online roleplay or meeting up with friends and doing a tabletop session with Dungeons & Dragons or Pathfinder or any other number of different kinds of games I highly encourage it, and I think it offers amazing opportunities for actors as well to get character studies for how they would behave under certain conditions in response to certain stress and external factors. I really have taken a lot of value from these roleplay experiences, and I also want to give the fair warning that for some people it might get a little bit too intense when you're put in a very unfortunate situation I have friends who have, because of what happened to their characters and the way it happened, had to stop playing for like a week. This sort of thing happens. But I really think it's worth pursuing and checking out. I think it's a really engaging opportunity. And I think that tabletop gaming really brings something that other games simply cannot achieve in this current state of the industry. The only middle ground that I see for this is a fully immersive virtual reality style title where you have sort of crossed that threshold into the virtual space, at which point you've opened up the floor for even more interesting and directly in front of you experiences. But at the same time, you lose the open-ended imagination that comes with things limited mostly to text. So I definitely hope you guys will check that sort of thing out. I hope that this talk has been of interest to you, and I hope that, if nothing else, you walk away with a sense of interest in tabletop. If you've already been playing tabletop games, that's something I'd like to hear about, those really meaningful personal experiences. And I hope that you'll share them with me however you wish to do so, be it directly or through a comment somewhere or things like that. In any case, I'm Stan, thanks for listening, and I hope you've enjoyed. Until next time, we'll have another chat.